So it goes without saying. You have to sort of like prepare, of course, the tackle block for this. But uh, just just you can pencil it out first, and then prior to, to filling out the all the details like your name, your section, your know, what school, and of course, and the particulars that are instructed in your first week of your classes. So now I'm going to be uh, penciling out what I have done. No? So I'm going to show you uh, the snippets of my sketch uh, schematic. Of course, again, I have to emphasize that you are not supposed to copy exactly what I did. But the thinking, it should be your original design. So I'm not expecting anyone to, to actually follow exactly what I have done. So once you determine your center and where your drawing area of your sheet is going to be, you would start pencilling out the dimensions uh, or the parameters of your drawing. In this case, uh, I need something that is 4 meters by 7 meters. So 4 meters being something like this, but it's if I'm going to be using 1 to 100, it would be so tiny that, that it, it's just a dwarf version of this and you cannot draw so much of the details. So I'm going to be using 1 to 50. So you have these particular uh, scales. If you have these particular scales in your scale ruler, Okay, mine, I'm, I'm using a very short one. So if you have a number like, say, 1 to 500, the thing to, to notice is that, you know, since there's an extra zero there, you just eliminate one of the zeros, even with these. Okay, so, so, so what it means is that if you eliminate one of the zeros and the zeros here, the zero to one, that then, would mean that is the one meter mark. So if I measure these, that would be in such a way that you know, it's going to be this four, this is four meters, and this would be seven meters on my paper. And that's perfect because I need the drawing to be big enough so that I could draw some of the details. I can see it much better. So for smaller plans, the scale of 1 to 50 is ideal. For bigger layouts, the scale should be 1 to 100 or even 1 to 200 for much more bigger types of drawings. A floor plan is an example of an orthographic drawing. So what it's going to be showing is x and the y axis uh, dimensions. The z will be on the section later on. I will show you an example of what this section is. So uh, drawing out the ghost lines first. Let me say ghost lines. Uh, I'm gonna, if I'm going to determine that this is my, my starting point of where my floor plan is. So I'm going to keep a four meter. Mark. If you're still confused with the, the, there's a zero here that is being the scale ruler only has, has this number, 1 to 500. So you can opt to use your mask to tape so that, so that you can lessen the confusion. Place it over onto the 1 to 500. It's a, take your pen. Yeah, point one. Remove that. Now you can mark up the points for every meter. So zero, one, two, three, four meters, and then the fifth meter. This is one. Is to fifty. Okay. So once you're set with that, of course. Start with a scale bar. Okay, so a scale bar would give me a context later on. 
okay, by visually. Okay, so where do you place the spill bar? So I want to start my drawings over here. Let's say this is the center, and I want to create the floor plan here first, and then later on I want to do a section here. So you should should place your drawings here for the scale bar. Now you will be considering some space for the lettering, of course, the title of the drawing and the scale. So my scale bar is going to be slightly uh, lower than that. So roughly here, I'm going to pencil in roughly about five meters worth. Mark up those five meter for every meter. That's the five meter mark. Okay, so the scale bar is going to be a, a visual indicator later on for those uh, if if we have we're not looking at the dimensions. And then roughly here, I'm going to start out with, of course, the 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 width or the x dimension of the floor, which is four meters. So I'm going to put a dot there and start there. And I'm going to mark the fourth meter. And then using your triangle, draw a ghost line or guideline long enough for seven meters. So I'm going to extend that. I'm going to extend that. The seventh meter is going to be here, and then mark up on zero here. So, so that's pretty much our. Uh, we just adjust this. That's pretty much our dimension. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. So later on, I want to do a, a section of this. This um, going probably up. So I'm going to create my a section here, the longitudinal or probably just the cross, uh, the cross section. Okay, now I'm going to mark out the where the wall partitions are going to be. Here, these are just tight lines. So I'm going to use my scale. Then this is where my study area is going to be. So make sure that you're not confused which scale. Okay, so I can probably change. Now, don't be uh, so strict with following your schematic at first. But once once the measurements are being fleshed in, you might want to slightly change a few things. So the cabinetry is about 0.8 depth here somewhere. So I have already adjusted the cabinet closet space to be much more wider to match out these things. And then the counter and that is going to be the uh, the wall for the toilet. This is one meter. So it's gonna be half open. So mark up like that. This is where the bed is going to be. This is where the balcony is going to be. So the balcony is going to be at least 1.8 meters. So I'm just going to go and pencil in 2 meters instead. I don't want the balcony to be a bit or In this case, if it's on the ground, it's going to be some sort of a 9. I want to be as uh, long as, as 4 meters. I don't need a four meters, so I'm just gonna go for two meters here. Two meters by two meters. That's this space. That's very straight. Probably this is going to be a garden area of sorts. So I have my door here, I have my bed, and uh, and the like. So now it's time to pencil in the thickness of the walls. So the thickness of walls usually are if you are on the side of say the exterior walls of the exterior are you normally thicker so the thickness of this is minimum usually 0.2 meters so i'm penciling so notice that i'm penciling inside so sometimes you would be all uh, designers would be penciling their half their 
there was onto the center of the guideline sorry or the center of the i'm going to mark out okay wait, wait. 0. 0.2 meters Two is going to be that, right? Then here, halfway middle of that, that would be point two. And then for interior walls, for example, this side is going to be your um, interior area of the house. This is going to be with wall thicknesses of say point one five. Let's simplify. Let's just consider this to be like, like 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is half the size. And I'm going to mark out all the 0.1. So this side is also within the interior. So the exterior walls are actually only the this and that. And the rest is interior space. So this is interior wall. So I'm going to it halfway of that guideline i start to uh create a double line for each of the walls so this this part is exterior actually so since this is uh open to outside so it's a thicker line here so it's going to be 0.2 and this area I start doing the exteriors Interior wall. Just point one. In actuality, I have to say that you know it's supposed to be point zero, uh, point one five. It has to be point one five in actuality. But uh, for this sake, let's just say that these are dry walls and, and they are point one meters. They're not CHP. This interior wall and extend that in to one meter. So I'm gonna pen uh, one one side of the exterior wall. I'm going to find out that things are in the fence air or in the correct measurement. So I start penciling in the furniture layout. 1.6 meter for the bed. There's a mistake here that I, I found that you know the bed will not fit if I am going to consider this. Uh, so I'm going to consider this space, these, the, the corridor space, to be like 0. 0.8. That's where I want to start my bed, which is 1.6 meters. That's what I'm going to do. Again, the interior wall, I'm going to extend it here. There. And probably I need to adjust the entrance of this so that I can fit in. Uh, I mean, like, like right now it's it's covering the uh, the entrance, so I need to shift this a bit. I have about 0.8 meters worth of space, and the counter is going to be roughly about 0.4. That's a counter over there. So this is where my bed is going to be. That's my entrance. I want that. So my entrance space is about minimum 0.8 meters clear. That creates that. Okay, there's another interior wall here, which is 0.1 meters. Put the thickness. So windows. I want to mark where the windows now are. So this has an opening. Uh, this is about roughly interior space of. Let where my corner of that entrance. So I don't need a door here. It's just going to be open because this is my workspace. The counter of uh, or tables. Say a fixed counter, and then we have a. A movable table there inside. I mean, it's roughly about say point three point five. We go in. This is my workspace. Bed is going to be something like two plus meters. The niche for TV. 
It's going to go in a bit by point half. I want my center of this TV is to be the center of this place, which is on that second. That's my center line there. I'm going to say create a niche, which is two meters wide. I need just like a, a built in impression uh, of the wall and it has this ledge. So that this is where my TV is going to be. So far, it's going to be here. So pretty much, I've penciled in, of course, what is necessary. Uh, here also, I need to put in how oh my this is here going in. This is the interior wall. I'm gonna take on this wall so that it matches the outside. I have this 1.9 meters worth of space. Uh, uh, void. So I'll be creating this sliding doors later on. So I want my sliding doors to be a bit more wider. When I open this, okay, so this is going to be a two door thing. So the fixed area, so I want this to be wider. Uh, so my what? What nine? Yes. I'll put the pencil in. Okay, so thickness of a pod. sliding door would be something like 0 0.05 or 2 inches. No, that would be too, too thick. That it's going to be a thickness of let's say uh two inches, one to two inches. So in between that, so which side is going to be sliding? This side, I want this open, so it's going to be uh point ninety five. Equal. Making sure that this is the right scale. Point ninety five is this. Later on, we'll see. How this is going to be drawn properly. So I start penciling in the furniture with that's a furniture template. Uh, what? 190 millimeters, centimeters, 190 centimeters. So I'm gonna place that in, making sure this is aligned with my edge, and I'm just gonna pencil. Of course slightly smaller than what I had in mind but so just to note that this is a symbol for our bed I'm going to draw in the pillow which is a uh, 20 by 30 inches and there's the bed sheet and then like that so that it reads like a so I don't think I need a side okay side table I do I so if, if that's the case uh, I want to thicken this one I'm gonna offset this wall a bit so that I could have a niche of some sort in view of a side table because that's where I want to put say uh, some like stuff so I'm gonna place in let's say a point to me which is something like this uh, of a point two is eight inches so this is a nice um enough shelf that i could place and then of course the tv dimension is is really you need to investigate the what measurement that is so here well back to why once the 50 scale so the PV nowadays are very thin, so you don't need so much of uh, a space going in. Now for the door, the door is so I'm gonna use this. Uh, but but then this is a very odd dimension, which is 0 0.885, and this one is 0 0.76, so it's not there. So I can use my circular template instead. I want a 0 0.8 meter clear door of course it has door jump off somewhere there and then i need a point eight so here i'm going to use so point eight is somewhere here 1.6 times 2 would be here 32 millimeters so that's in millimeters since it's twice more that we need okay no. we use since I'm doing 0.6, okay, so I'm gonna center this one. The center needs to be here, and that needs to be flush there. So basically, it's going to be like here. 
first do find out what, how uh, door symbols are made uh, drawn how door symbols are drawn properly and of course the sofa but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure that that's centered here okay, mark at top I want that so there's a new way okay, I'm gonna stop there I'm gonna draw that in I know that's how it's supposed to be drawn here something like this so, so cabinetry it's only about two, the thickness of the walls the cabinetry is coming in very thin which is only about 20 millimeters I'm just going to draw it something like this when halfway of this is the partition between closet space and shelf space so I'm going to do an X I determine the center of this right there you go and then the table for the balcony that to symbolize circle could symbolize the outdoor table I need to extend this a bit more sample space for the chairs so I think back for a bit I'm going to determine where my shower is by one meter by one meter And then my water closet space. Oh, so counter space is roughly needs to be around one meter at least. Now that gives me an ample space here to go enter the shower area. Let's say 1.1 meter for my counter, for my sink, or lavatory. So I enter my shower area with this from here, this space. Of course, there are many ways to reconfigure a, a toilet, but uh, I'm not, since this is just an example, I'm just going to 0.9 meters. So that's ample space. Okay, a minimum width for any water closet is going to be 0.8. That's ample enough. So I determine my 0.45, which is the halfway of that for the center of the I'm just going to draw a line so that I know where the center of the toilet fixture is going to be. I'm going to draw in that toilet fixture. So it's not complete yet, but it's going to be there. So there's a piece of glass probably here. It's very thin. That's uh, roughly only 20 millimeters. So you go in, there's a shower area, and then this is uh, the water closet, and then we have a sink here. So the sink, have an idea of where it has to be centered a bit. So I'm just going to grab it, shift it there, where the counter is. The mirror is going to be here. So now I need to place in, so you would probably have cabinet, cabinetry here. I need to determine where my windows are and uh, I, as much as possible I'd like something like a cross ventilation so so since this is an exterior I want my window to be um, somewhere here what is this inside the main trunk this is 1.8 so point 9 is the temperature so windows are usually in between a uh, width of a minimum width or opening of a window is 1.6 meters. It's it's mainly for for people so that people can can actually step out for safety during stuff like fire during emergencies. So I'm gonna use, but then I can use a 0.8 set uh, 0.8. I want to use fully use this. I want a wide window here because I want to. I want I want light coming in uh, here more. And then I need a cross ventilation. For example, not all rooms should all the time be air conditioned. So that that light, natural light and natural cross ventilation of air, to always be present. One point six. 
So 0.8 modules for Windows. I'm using that. So the wall is going to be here. This is the window. I'll be mindful where these things are. So I want that to be my window over here. And that's, that's the wall. And then another window here because I would like to have some sort of light coming in also other than the glass panel doors here that during the daytime we can still have this sort of area being lit and then if I don't want so much light I could always put a curtain there yeah, so once or twice let's see this is a two meter yeah I'm gonna place in where my 1.6 meter window set is gonna be not the wall and this is where the windows are and then for the toilet, it's going to be a higher window, of course. And uh, but then you can see that here. And you can always see that inception later on. But uh, the more windows, the better. But they're higher windows. Modules are going to be 1.2 or 2.6 windows. So I want usually my bathrooms to have cross ventilation. So here, this is roughly about three meters. Halfway of that is here. I want to count point three here and then another point six. But then I want, I don't want it to cross over here. This is where I want my mirror to be. Uh, so therefore I'm going to shift it a bit. I'm going to place my perfectly here. So this is my entire window space. So this is the window window. I won't get them. so that I won't get confused. I'm gonna pencil them in a bit. This is gonna be my window. But but then unless that's the exterior. But if this is the uh, interior, so there are no windows here. Huh. So I made a mistake there. Um I'm just not going I'm I'm not going to have a window there. So it's time to ink. So inking is with different types of pen widths. Normally, okay, so there's there's always a hierarchy of pen widths uh, when drafting. Walls are usually thick, re represented with a thick line. So in this case, I'm going to be using 0.8 millimeters, whereas for the rest, like uh, furniture and all that, 0.1. So it's uh actually there's more variety, but uh, in this case, no, I'm just going to simplify it with two pens. One is 0.8 millimeters and the other one point one millimeters so in order for you to, to to understand this so i'm going to use the thicker pen first so that i could you could see start seeing where the walls are before you do that make sure that you have um some sort of extra paper underneath because these things tend to the ink uh the pens tend to to seep over okay so so i'm going to take uh i'm going to be using a an A4 and place it underneath. I'm gonna place it underneath so that as a precaution, so that I won't, I will not have uh, the problem of the the ink going through the paper and onto my drawing board. I'm set to ink. Be sure that you know where 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 to ink and where to stop and where your windows are, especially so that you don't overrun. Okay, so my walls are there. Always look first before drawing paper lines. So my window openings, window opening here, window openings there. This wall where my niches is going to be. It's going to be continuous until do that. That's an exterior wall. And then interior wall is going to be inside. Interior wall for the closet area. Now make sure that you're not you're you're not creating gaps between these lines, the corners of these lines. That's the interior wall. Interior wall so far. The so walls are thicker in, in being illustrated in floor plans. I missed one. This is an interior wall. Interior. So make sure that these are don't have gaps so you can even go over the corners of each lines so i'd rather you go over slightly than having a gap window here window there 
window there. Then the walls here, being mindful and careful where, where to ink. Look before inking, before drawing. Make sure no gaps are there. Small opening here. Here. Going to be a niche somewhere there. So now it's reading a bit more like a floor plan in architecture and uh, just finishing up all the thicker lines. So there. I'm going to now use my 0.1 millimeters. Start inking the sills of the windows. And then ink in the windows themselves. So just a representation of the windows are like this double line. Also like just those are just uh, the way they're drawn. So the window cell, which is the opening bottom surface opening of the window. I mark out two two points there and then Draw out the window set. Double lines. Then there's going to be a step down since this is a balcony of sorts of lanai. It's a different level from the bedroom. So there's one step down which is would be symbol symbolized with one line, one thin line. So that's an edge there, a ledge of some sorts. And then, of course, the, the thin glass doors, sliding doors. So usually you represent the sliding doors to be halfway open. And then a sliding door I would always have an arrow. Think on that arrow, like so. Windows, uh, the cell for the TV, it's going to be here. Let me show this. The TV itself, you know, it's just a rectangular, um, long, a rectangular thing that you could just represent to represent that. The door is going to be, we need a thickness. Okay. So they're supposed to have a, a door, um, door jam of sorts. First here. So, I made a mistake there already. Uh, this has to be like an extended thing. So, okay. So I made a mistake already there. And uh, the thickness of the door jam or the frame this is about roughly about uh, an inch to a uh, two inch, which is 0 0.025 to 0 0.05. Meters. And then the thickness of a door panel is probably to be roughly about 0 0.05 meters. And of course, the wing of the door is illustrated. Okay, just making sure that the center of the one is the right time M. Just to show that, you know, it's not hitting anything. So use your circular template. And the cabinet door area. A cabinet storage it's going to be like just illustrate them like so with double lines here to symbolize your closet space where you hang your clothes I'm just going to have these things to like little ellipsis or flat ellipsis and so sorts so it's uh to symbolize that these are where you to hang the clothes like the fish balls so i'm even this is going to be my uh storage area for shelves area for the closet stage or storage space now to do the fixtures here in the bathroom so this is my counter i will have a mirror so this is where my lavatory sink or sink is going to be. Again, the dimensions, uh, you need to research them yourselves. 
prior to designing. Shower area is going to be a depressed area. No, no, nothing to for it. Probably there's going to be a shower curtain somewhere there. But uh, the glass is a double, it's a double line, which is a representation of a point zero two or twenty mm thick glass. But usually, you know, I just lightly ink some part and then I ink the hand, saying this is a symbol of the bed. Bed sheet. And here, some people did out with the pillow in a bit more organic than a rectangular form. And then for the seat, uh, completed with a you can always draft it some parts. So I might draft some parts. Midpoint of that, like, uh, the separation. The arm shred is going to be here. Just freehand that. And then complete that. And then for the table counter that is built in. This is what we have so far. And of course, the finishing touch, of course, is the railing for the balcony or the night. Which is roughly about 0 0.05 or 2 inches in thickness. I'm just going to do double lines to symbolize that these are railings. For the uh, toilet area, we need to put in some tile to draw out the tile. So the tiles would be at least a 0.2 meters. And I'm going to use, of course, the same scale. First, with the pencil, you mark out the point every point two meters. And of course, the horizontal measurements. I'm going to be using my point points. Start drawing the line. I'm going to start up with the horizontal line. I'm making sure that I know where to stop. Continue still. Of course, avoid the counter. Then for the vertical lines. So I'm down to my last few lines. Now to emphasize that there is a step down that this is more depressed than the other one, I usually would reinforce that with a thicker line or a more pressured line from a point one. So basically, this is it. Um, a very general, of course, you can always place a, a cabinetry somewhere there. And look here. Storage or shelves. If in the case of this one, for example, uh, you want some shelves here. You can always, okay, so 0 0.45, 0 0.40 would be nice. So I could use Get the lines and the lines to symbolize that there are shelves above and make sure that the ends of your the header lines hit the the next line solidly in the corner those are shelves okay. you could have gone l shape here if you want to something uh, other things like, say, a shower head. You know those, one of those overhead shower heads? So I'm going to use, say, 0.2 and uh, look at the where the center of this is. Like in this space, uh, slightly bigger. I need that be in scale just to symbolize that, you know, uh, there is something above. Okay. Again, hidden lines are there to symbolize that there is something beyond or behind the object. 
beyond the looper or be just behind the the, the, the viewer. And I use the circular template to to have that. So it's it's a it's a symbol of something about like the shower head. But one of the things that you could you could probably also do is to symbolize the difference between uh, the heights of your your floorix. So this is one level. So this one usually the toilet is a depressed area than the than this area. More obviously here because if it's this is the outside. If it rains, there there should be a height difference of the floors so that you know rain cannot go in. To emphasize this, I'm going to put a symbol to note that this is of a diff two different heights. But so one is above, the other one is lower, which is of course the balcony. Now time to do the letter. So of course the guidelines are, are needed first. Uh, we're going to be using a five, what well, three millimeters. So I'm gonna take in my centimeter, not a scale ruler anymore. So I can de first determine where my centers are or the areas for example this corner to that corner. This corner to that corner. So I know where my lettering is, but you know it's in the way of this line. So therefore I can slightly go up so so that you know uh I'm gonna say you know this is where the main bed is going to be or main area. Okay, so I'm just going to say that this is the main area. I'm gonna have three millimeters as a guide for the lettering. So I can letter can pencil lightly main area. So it's going to be a two word thing. So I should have two lines which is since this is a three millimeter, I want halfway to be a spacing. Half height to be my spacing. One, two, three, three millimeters. So main main just pencil it out for a bit. So once you determine, say, where the spacing for and the height of the lettering is going to be, like this is your work space. Let's roughly do this. And of course, obviously, this is the toilet and bath. Toilet space halfway letter. And under space lettering, or right. and then of course this is going to be our where our line is. So I'm gonna choose my table center of this as my let for where my lettering is going to be, and Obviously, this is closet space. And so now, time uh, time to do some lettering in ink. Since I have the guidelines already, lettering to this, uh, which is going to be five and three millimeters of lettering. The title of this drawing, and of course, the three millimeters is going to be where your scale is. So I'm just going to pencil this slightly. We call shall call this my dead row floor plan in five millimeters and then of course a uh, three millimeter will be scale one is to 50. now i will use a six millimeter for my lettering for this so in order for it to read better work space so i'm going to change this instead of bedroom saying bedroom it's going to be my main main area First line, I, title is going to be mine. Make sure that it's touching both lines, up and down. Oh, by the way, you can use a 0.8 if it's that's better. If you do that.
and then scale six and three millimeters. One is two fifty. So that's the finished product for this one. I guess the section will we'll discuss section sometime later. And but uh, this is generally what the a floor plan one to fifty should be drafted in such a way like uh, make sure that you know some stuff like uh, not leaving a gap like here what I did is avoided or completed and yeah that's it uh, that's the demonstration for this for uh, this example this is my example and you probably your prof uh, your mentor would would be asking you to do something different. It's up to him or her. And uh, yeah, this is very much basic way of, of drafting out your schematic. So I wanted you to create your own so that you could feel already to start your training in, in terms of, of doing your own floor plans or your own designs by um, investigating or research and then finding out things yourselves. Um, finding out your, your things yourselves or the research is what makes it is what trains you to know things. And uh, if it's just given to you and that's it, it's not really, it doesn't really become yours if you don't even, you have to thoroughly research these things. The information out there is uh, so vast. Uh, I could even give you a link to some of the the literature that you can read. So uh, it's not perfect at all. Uh, of course, I made a mistake somewhere there, but everything else is pretty much okay. And of course, this is not a perfect plan at all. This is not even... Uh, there are things, of course, that you could probably do things a much more uh, better layout than this. So uh, until until the next week, uh, this is it. So see you next week then again for another lecture.